So, uh, as uh, rightly emphasized by Dr. Ketan uh, uh, in the beginning part of uh, this uh, uh, online meeting, uh, we are uh, focusing on these three groups of organisms because in individual centers, the isolation rate is relatively less. So, individual centers have synthesized uh, an antibiogram by itself. So when we pool data from so many centers, it, uh, we, we will be able to generate a very valuable antibiogram for these less commonly isolated organisms. Uh, now let us uh, go in detail about uh, Vibrio species. So we all know that Vibrio, uh, there are, we can broadly divide them as Vibrio cholerae and other Vibrio species. As far as this study is concerned, Vibrio cholerae we can uh, identify using uh, conventional biochemical methods and anti-sera testing is strongly recommended. Even if a center is not able to confirm by anti-sera testing, it can be submitted. Uh, there will be an option to select uh, an appropriate identification that I will describe later. Automated uh, identification of Ibrio cholera using uh, Vitec GNID card followed by anti-sera testing is also acceptable. Uh, as far as other species of Vibrio uh, are concerned, conventional method is better using biochemical test. They can also be identified using uh, Vitec GNID card uh, with the appropriate supplementary uh, conventional biochemical test. Identification of Vibrio cholerae can be conventionally done uh, using this protocol. So we all, most of the labs follow this protocol only. Growth on TCBS saga uh, because the organism is sucrose fermenting, yellow colored colonies will be seen. So that will be the starting point when we try to isolate the organism from stool sample. Uh, generally, hanging drop is done. The organism shows dieting motility. Oxidase test is positive. So oxidase test uh, is uh, better. I mean, uh, it is recommended to be done by growth using growth that is obtained on non-inhibitory medium like uh, Buller Intanaga, Nutrient Aga. Even growth on triple sugar iron agar, KIA can also be used, but it is not to be uh, done using growth on TCBs or Recon K. Further testing can be done using carbohydrate fermentative tests like OF glucose. Uh, the organism shows fermentative metabolism. TSI agar, the reaction will be acid by acid. KIA agar, it will be alkaline by acid without any gas production. Carbohydrate fermentation using broth can also be done. It is a sucrose fermenter and non-lactose fermenter without any gas production. Growth in nutrient broth with and without uh, sodium chloride. Uh, the organism, because it is non-halophilic, it will grow uh, even without uh, sodium chloride also and will grow in presence of 1% sodium chloride also. Indole production, the organism will be indole positive and nitrate reduction test will be positive. Moller's decarboxylation test is a very valuable test in identifying the Vibrio species and differentiating uh, the organism from closely related uh, uh, organisms like Aeromonas and Plesiomonas, especially because when we test uh, the organism using Vitec, many times uh, Vibrio cholerae is falsely identified as Aeromonas sobria. In such situations, uh, lysine can be very uh, useful. So, Vibrio cholerae will be lysine and ornithine positive and arginine negative. Another valuable test that can be done is a string test. That also is useful in differentiating Vibrio uh, from uh, other closely related species like uh, Aeromonas. Once we confirm the ID as Vibrio cholerae based on biochemical test, then uh, it is highly recommended to confirm it further using O1 anti sera that is zero grouping. So uh, if the organism is positive by O1 zero group test, only then biochemical test to differentiate whether it is classical or LTAR biotype is mandatory. It has to be done. It is very simple by using these three tests. So the first one is growth on sheep blood agar. If there is hemolysis, it indicates LTAR type. Polymixin B50 units, any size zone is considered as sensitive. LTOR is uh, susceptible and uh, classical is resistant. OHS plus cover test, again, LTOR is positive and classical is negative. So, this is applicable only when we confirm the isolate as O1 zero group. 
for other zero groups and non coloral groups this is not applicable and uh, after this if the lab is having anti sera to identify ogawa inaba zero types it is recommended to be done but it is not mandated it's an optional thing once we complete identification by all these methods we can choose in ibar manually the final identity of the organism so there will be a drop down the list available so all these options will be available based on how extensively we have tested the organism if the organism is tested uh, only by biochemical test we can identify it as ubiquitous cholerae though it is not preferred because uh, some labs might require time to uh, enable themselves with all the tests possible and also the anti sera meanwhile this can be done they can anyway uh, do anti sera testing in later entries vibrio cholerae if it is confirmed with o10 group then this can be selected uh, by based on biochemical test or vitec if the lab has identified beyond any doubt that the organism is vibrio cholerae but it is not answering to o1 anti sera then it can be uh, identify uh, select chosen as vibrio cholerae non o10 group only those uh, vibrio cholerae which are very positive with o1 anti sera further uh, biotyping is done and appropriate biotype as classical or l tor biotype is selected if a lab is able to perform zero typing after that then the remaining two options can be selected vibrio cholerae o1 zero group classical type biotype ogawa or inaba or ecogen similarly for l so all these options will be available so uh, if each lab does maximum effort and is able to identify the organism level till 6 or 7 these nomenclatures then it will be very good uh, outcome at the end i uh, encourage all the labs to uh, procure anti sera which are available for less cost from uh, csi i mean uh, kasoli so uh, all labs can perform this even the biochemical tests are not extra exhaustive they are easily available in most of the labs and these can be performed this is about the vibrio cholerae when it comes to non cholera vibrio species then these biochemical tests uh, and uh, culture media are preferred growth on tcbs saga many uh, non cholera vibrios are sucrose non fermenters so growth can be green so uh, so it has to be carefully uh, identified uh, oxidase test all of them are first to accept uh, one species that is vashnikovi oif glucose or tsi agar or kai agar uh, need to be done growth on nutrient broth with and without uh, sodium chloride 1% indole production nitrate reduction test and molars decarboxylation test are useful in identifying individual species so uh, this is a table from uh, konipan seventh edition so these biochemical tests are displayed here so using these biochemical test we can identify different species of uh, non cholera vibrios now uh, regarding performing antimicrobial susceptibility testing the recommended method for this study is distribution optional is vitec so uh, all of us are familiar with uh, ibar data entry so in that we know that on the left hand side there is a list of antibiotics immediately after that in the center there is primary uh, antibiotic uh, susceptibility details so uh, right now we have white egg details as the primary but as far as vibrio is concerned in the primary uh, section it will be distribution so all of us need to enter the zone diameter and interpretation will be done as per clsi or upas by the ibar software itself after that on the right hand extreme right hand side there will be secondary uh, panel and the mics uh, from the vitec will be picked up by the software there so interpretation will be based on that so uh, most important thing is disk diffusion we have to do by disk uh, uh, we have to do for all isolates vibrio so this is a mandatory test whether we perform vitec or not disk diffusion must be done for all vibrio isolates so uh, disk diffusion methodology will be as usual only one uh, important thing that we need to note is inoculum should be prepared using normal saliva 
here using the, the plum water. So here we have to choose only only normal saline. This will allow most isolates of Vibrio species to grow satisfactorily on the MHA. And if a center does uh, uh, micro broth dilution, then even cation adjusted molar hinter broth uh, without adding supplemental sodium chloride to these test media. So that is simple. So as far as disc, uh, diffusion is concerned, because we have already done inoculation preparation with sodium chloride, we don't have to prepare a special type of molar internaga. So usual molar internaga without uh, supplemental sodium chloride is enough. And the rest of the things are uh, as usual. Mac for land 0.5 standard and incubation is at room air at 35 plus or minus 2 degrees Celsius for 16 to 18 hours. Reading, uh, so the usual method using the reflected light and quality control as recommended for routine AST discs. So all these are as per the CLSI M45 third edition. Reading will be based on CLSI and UCAST guidelines that I will explain later. Okay, so uh, these are the panels that will be used for the study for uh, Vibrio species. On the left hand side, you can see a uh, list of eight antimicrobials and this panel is used for Vibrio quality. So these are recommendations by, uh, for these antimicrobials, we have interpretation guidelines by either CLSI or UCAS that we can see mentioned in the bracket. Some of these antimicrobials are highlighted green and these are uh, the recommendations from CLSI as uh, primary for primary testing. Okay, anyway, for all these will be tested for this study. So uh, some of these antimicrobials will also be available in Vitec 405 and 406 cards. Those which are not available uh, uh, need to be tested. On the right hand side, we can see a bigger table with all antimicrobials. And these antimicrobials, uh, I mean, this is the panel to be used for uh, on cholera vibrios. So again, uh, interpretation will be based on CLSI or UCAST uh, guidelines. So these uh, marked green, cefotoxime, ciprofloxin, levofloxin, and tetracycline are indicated for primary testing. So anyway, to get an antibiogram, all labs have to perform all these uh, antibi antibiotic susceptibility testing uh, using all these antimicrobials of respective panels. I hope uh, this is clear. The smaller table with eight antimicrobials is for Vibrio cholerae and the bigger table with 12 antimicrobials is for non cholera Vibrio species. Okay, uh, that was about Vibrio. Coming to Salmonella species, organism identification can be done manually or using Vitec. Only thing that is mandatory is a serotype level identification using anti serum. Both conventional and Vitec ID is acceptable. Serotyping uh, uh, is done by the standard protocol. Uh, we can use O anti serum and H anti serum. So the table down below shows the details how it can be done. Salmonella, Enterica, PolyO, PolyH uh, are very useful in uh, identifying the group and uh, uh, Serotyping can be done using the specific uh, O and H anti serum. Antimicrobials that we are going to test uh, includes 12 antimicrobials listed here. So again, uh, this diffusion will be considered as the main methodology of doing antibiotic susceptibility testing. Vitec will be optional. Again, uh, all isolates of salmonella species irrespective of any sample. From all samples, it will be included in this study. Shigella species, uh, similar to salmonella species, identification can be done by conventional biochemical test or using Vitec GNID method, but it has to be definitely, definitely confirmed to species level uh, using anti -serum and uh, AST should be mandatorily done by distribution method and Vitec is optional. These 12 antimicrobials need to be tested using distribution and it will, this will be the standard panel used for this group of organisms. Data entry for Vibrio, Salmonella, Shigella study uh, will be done from uh, using the IBAR platform. 
as done routinely for other isolates. Uh, demographics need to be entered manually if only distribution is performed and YTEC AST is not performed. What I mean to say here is uh, only when we do AST using YTEC, the da MIC data will be available in YTEC and that will be transferred to IBAR. So an entry will be already there, the IBAR software. But when distribution alone is done and uh, YTEC AST is not done, uh, the whole data entry will not be there. It has to be done manually. That's an easy procedure. It can be learned and done. So organism ID, uh, is done. organism name has to be manually entered. And uh, AST only for those antimicrobial agents will be included in the panel, which is already discussed in previous slides for these groups of organisms. And when we do entry uh, manually, the zone diameter has to be definitely mentioned. It is compulsory. And if it is tested by YTEC, by either using N405 or 406 cards, MIC value should be included. So this completes my presentation. If there are any doubts, I would like to take. Sir, how to procure the antithera for salmonella and from where? Uh, can you please repeat, madam? Antithera procurement. To, uh, okay. Yeah, for yeah. salmonella. Uh, two centers uh, I know are CRI Kasoli and uh, King Institute of Preventive Medicine uh, in Chennai. Madam. So we can procure from them. There are some uh, companies also like uh, DIFCO from whom we can procure. So Shigenma is generally not available in these uh, government uh, uh, institutions. They have to be procured from uh, uh, commercial sources. So are they available for private hospitals also like us? That part I am not sure we need to explore. But yeah, medical colleges they definitely give. We get from uh, CRI Kasoli. But it's or not medical Institute. college, no? that's why. Okay. We'll... Private hospital, we have to explore. Anybody, uh, uh, anybody who has the experience of procuring these antisera from CRI Kasoli who are working in uh, corporate setup or private hospitals. Okay, we will explore that. Publish. We'll, Publish. Uh, what we'll do uh, also is uh, we'll uh, share the identification uh, table for all the common species what we expect uh, to do and the minimal conventional test which can differentiate them at the level of serotypes or uh, in case of uh, salmonella and at the level of species in sigilla. Uh, we encourage all the centers to do serotyping, uh, but in some in case they are not able to procure for the time being, then they can stick to those uh, panel of uh, conventional tests which can differentiate with them on a strict basis. Uh, so, and one more thing about, this is about identification. So, suppose your identification came uh, on Vitek, then uh, you need to just confirm that identification with basic, very basic biochemical test uh, to just make sure that uh, it is, uh, it is the what, like for example, non-cholera vibros. Sometimes Vitek gives misidentification for non-cholera vibros. So in those cases, at least the basic biochemical uh, colony characteristics must be performed. Uh, just looking at the Vitek ID and, and uh, relying on that ID in these cases is unreliable. Sigilla and Vib non cholera Vibrio are on the top of the list. Uh, in general, Vibrio also. Salmonella, the reliability is more as compared to Sigilla and Vibrio for Vitek ID. So we always encourage, if you get the automated ID, do at least minimum level of biochemicals uh, to fill it, fit it into uh, Vibrio species or, or Sigilla. Regarding AST, uh, uh, Salmonella, Sigilla, and Vibrio, uh, the primary mode of testing will be a disk diffusion, but centers are welcomed to, uh, if they want to do Vitek, they can do. As you know, we have a separate platform in IBAR for disk diffusion entry as well as Vitek entry. So your primary mode, uh, compulsory entry will be performing will be on disk diffusion. Vitek, if you do, those uh, will be pulled from Vitek uh, to the IBER screen and you can interpret both. One more point is, in case uh, the panel what we have shown will share with you also, in case you don't have any disk, like we have included uh, ciprofloxacin uh, and payfloxacin for salmonella, in case you don't have any disk which we have uh, enlisted, chloramphenicol and all those things, you can reach out to us, uh, we'll see uh, how we'll work around for that. So don't need to uh, see that we have eight or 12 or uh, disks in the panel. We may, we may You may not be having those disks available. 
in fin case you don't have those disks available just reach out to us we'll find out a way how to uh, go about that okay we'll okay. share the cri casoli's number uh, in the group uh, maybe you can call uh, the source centers who are, uh, are doubtful about whether you'll be getting or not uh, uh, we have the number of cri casoli i'll share it in the group and uh, maybe uh, if the number is has changed i have not uh, updated my uh, number but i have for little by wheel, but I'll I'll share it. If someone of you have the recent number, you can share it on the group. Maybe uh, some of us may call them and ask about the availability uh, and uh, regarding such. Any other way, if you want, uh, we're, we're not very costly because what some centers, some places I know which are very costly, they provide uh, those antiseptic in a very uh, costly priced. So if, if we, in a reasonable price, if any of the other centers uh, know about any procurement way, they can also share in the group so that, that other centers may get benefited from that. Any doubt we have regarding Vibro study uh, uh, or Salmonella sigilla, Vibro Salmonella sigilla study yeah. may ask. So what, what one, one point I'll tell you is uh, Salmonella sigilla is in general, uh, is a part of our VMR phase two. Uh, subgroup study in light, uh, encourages you to because uh, how in vmr phase two we go we you uh, include a particular specimen in your uh, 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 vmr phase two like blood or blood sterile fluid and something and primarily uh, which you use uh, vitek ast as a uh, mode of testing but for salmonella sigilla vibru it's not like that from any specimen which are which you have not enrolled so far in our vmr phase two you can uh, include Salmonella sigilla vibrio species from all the specimens, uh, irrespective of what you have already committed for v uh, VMR phase two. That is what uh, how it is going to be different. Yeah, and the same thing will be applicable for uh, uh, Pseudomalai and uh, and uh, Haemophilus also. No, Ketan? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, regardless, they they have enrolled those specimens in the uh, VMR study or not for uh, for Vitek? See, you, your enrollment of specimen for VMR study is mainly a Vitek based. But for the organism, what we are discussing today, we are taking a common consensus that whatever is the specimen, whatever uh, we can include those into the into our study. Uh, regardless, it is uh, already enrolled for VMR study or not those specimens. Uh, Dr. Apurba, I have a query. Dr. Navina from VMR 28 Bangalore. Yes, ma'am. Uh, though we have not enrolled for this study, uh, occasionally we'll be getting isolates of salmonella from uh, blood and uh, sometimes uh, body fluids, pericardial fluid and others. Can we submit that so that you yes. can have it as a miscellaneous? Uh... Yeah, that's what we are telling, ma'am. Uh, uh -huh. Vitek, uh, Vitek submission is not required for whatever organisms we are discussing today. Okay. Uh, basically, five organisms: Sigala, Samanala, Vibrio, Bacteria, Pseudomalai, okay. and Haemophilus influenza. Okay. We okay. are absolutely okay for distribution-based data collection. Okay. okay. And uh, because our earlier uh, sample commitment was only for Vitek based, therefore uh -huh. there are many samples which we have not enrolled uh, yes. in our yes. study. Yeah. But for uh, today's uh, whatever this five group of organisms we are discussing, we can submit all those specimens also. Into, okay. uh, into into the study. Okay. And for this purpose, if some specific uh, faculty is involved, which is not a, who is not a part of VMR earlier, if uh, any of your centers are uh, uh, thinking that uh, inclusion of one faculty is required uh, to uh, to collect their uh, isolate data, then you can always uh, uh, re uh, revise your agreement. Thank you, Doctor Pur. Yes, ma'am. So I hope the thing is clear. I have because... one query. Uh, yeah. Like for Salmonella, uh, whatever the designated antibiotic are there as per CLSI 24. So can we have a mix like few MIC from 235 card and few, few disc diffusion uh, 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 I mean, report by disc Yes, acceptable. Test? Acceptable. Absolutely acceptable. If you're already doing uh, white That is what we are Salmonella, doing actually. For Samanala, mm -hmm. if you're already doing Vitek or for Sigala, you're already doing Vitek, then you can include those MICs from there. And uh, mm -hmm. you can and add on additional, additional few distribution. You can add on additionally by distribution. Okay. Thank you. Good morning, Dr. Purva. 
can i can we do only for salmonella and burkholderia because at our institute there, there are few cases of vibrio and shigella mostly they are Even any center who is having one vibrio in the entire study period also should should submit their data because there is no minimum uh, sample load what we are asking okay no, uh, no minimum isolate isolated load. Uh, that is the reason why earlier we thought uh, 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 today's discussion organisms will keep as a sub-study but uh, later on we have changed to a uh, national uh, study because every center should participate in this study. Yes. yes. Uh, that is how you can have your Vibrio antibiogram at the end of the study. Because yeah, that would be great. the center uh, also cannot have more than 10 Vibrio in a year. So Vibrio antibiogram is not possible. Hemophilus antibiogram is, is not possible. Only when we all join hand together, we can have our antibiogram, which, which each of us can use. Yes, I'll, then I'll be doing for all of them. Whatever uh, positive whatever. sample will come, I'll, I'll, I'll add that also. So these five organisms, whatever we are discussing today, Vibrio, Sigilla, Samanella, Pseudomelae and Hemophilus, in, uh, Hemophilus, Regardless of the specimen, please enroll. You are uh, whether you are doing Vitek or a distribution or whatever you you are doing, you please enroll. There are okay. some specific methods for hemophilus, like hemophilus test medium and all that we are going to discuss. Uh, okay. because Vitek you can't do for hemophilus. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Any other uh, queries? Do we need to enroll again for this? Dr. No. no, no. No, madam. No need to enroll, enroll again. Yeah. Thank you. For uh, today's organisms, uh, all the centers are by default, they are enrolled. Okay. So no need to fill any Excel again. No need uh, to enroll again. Thank you. Hello. Good morning, Dr. Apurva. Dr. Sarita from Zaidas Hospital, Ahmedabad. Uh, yes. I have one question. Uh, the data to be filled in the same uh, VMR uh, Ivar, yes. app Ivar study? Ivar, Ivar only, yes. Ivar only, okay. Yeah. okay. In the second uh, secondary, uh, we can fill yes. up the... Yeah, yeah. Ivar has a distribution option, so uh, uh, that is where you have to enter. Okay, whatever we do it in uh, Vitec MIC, we'll fill it in Vitec and remaining things, we'll put it in the secondary uh, distribution, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, but okay, ma'am, for uh, pseudomelae and for hemophilus influenza, Vitec is not recommended. Therefore, we are purely going for uh, distribution. Yeah, yeah, we don't get much of that isolate. We usually get more of salmonella isolates. So, yeah. if if any such cases, we'll definitely refer uh, the PPT and yeah. we'll do the testing. Yeah, correct. Thank Dr. You. Apurba, Dr. Apurba, Dr. Navina here. Since the isolate yes. uh, numbers will be uh, minimal for all this, can you take some retrospective data for this? Uh, retrospective data, uh, the only problem is hemophilus and uh, uh, pseudomelae. Uh, there is recommended methods what we are going to uh, present today. No, like uh, pseudomelae, we are following uh, UCAS guideline and for hemophilus, uh, CLSI, but uh, we have to use STM medium. Okay. So uh -huh. we are taking retrospect, if those things are uh, ensured by the centers, then yes, we no, can we, take. We would have stopped some isolates of Vibrio and Salmonella, right? Some of the medical colleges. And uh, we can submit those, at least we may have a good number for uh, having an antibiogram. Uh, yes, ma'am. You, you uh, we, we, yeah, we can look into this. Yeah. Uh, Anand, uh, you can contact Anand. Uh, he will discuss with you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Sure. Okay. In fact, aeromonas is uh, aeromonas is another stool pathogen which uh, also the centers have to en uh, enroll. So I mean, enrollment they will they have to enter. So uh, aeromonas there is clear cut Vitec available. So the uh, therefore we are not included in today's uh, discussion because you can enter aeromonas uh, data under Vitec. But uh, that is another stool pathogen which can be uh, enrolled. No other doubt is there. Can we move on to the 
सुडमलाई आर डिस्कशन केतन विल मूव सर विल मूव टू थैंक यू सर ओके थैंक यू डॉक्टर केतन एंड अपूर थैंक यू एवरीवन सो आई वुड लाइक टू रिक्वेस्ट डॉक्टर संध्या मैम टू टेक द सीट फॉर आवर बर्कोडे सुडमलाई डिस्कशन yeah thank you dr ketan uh, so in continuation with the doctor uh, dr anand i will without wasting time i'll just uh, share my screen is it visible yes ma'am so good morning all uh, uh, the sub study the title of the study is amr surveillance of burglary slide should... share mode it's not in yeah. slides is it okay yeah ma'am it's okay yeah The title of this study is AMR surveillance of Burkholderia pseudomonai. So, as been discussed uh, priorly, so here the methodology that will be used is only Kirby-Barr distribution method, and we'll be following the UCAS 2024 guideline. So, the objective is surveillance of the AMR and anti-background preparation of Burkholderia pseudomonai isolates from all the types of clinical specimens using the only disk diffusion method. and that is ucas 2024 guideline so why we are uh, uh, taking only disk diffusion breakpoint so coming to this the background of this uh, the thought process is because the breakpoint for the pseudomolai isolates have been provided for few antibiotic agents under clsi m45 guideline and that they have given only mic breakpoints and the disk diffusion breakpoints have been provided By a more guidelines by a Thailand study group, uh, so so there is no uniformity with the uh, breakpoints which is being provided by CLSI as well as the guidelines. So this uh, VMR study group we have decided and uh, that we will be followed because there is a cross variation in the breakpoint interpretation between the various guidelines. So to generate an antibiogram, we need to follow a common uh, breakpoint guideline so that. the uniformity of data will be which will be uh, will be followed so that we'll be able to prepare a uniform antibiogram so coming to the point here the the for the uh, why clsi is uh, the mic breakpoints are not been used here uh, in the clsi the most common that the treatment of choice the mirapenem so that uh, also there is no mic breakpoint available in the clsi m45 45 document and more provides only the disk diffusion breakpoints and it is not available for all the drugs which are uh, used for the uh, treatment purpose so where uh, anyway the whereas the ucas provides a breakpoint for disk diffusion as well as the mic breakpoints for the uh, most of the common drugs which are used for the treatment of meliodosis and as the meliodosis the pseudomonas is a dangerous pathogen so we suggest all the laboratory strongly we recommend to use the culture and sensitivity testing to be performed with the biosafety cabinet type 2 a2 so coming to the brief methodology the inclusion will be all the clinical isolates of burkholderia pseudomonas from blood exudate aspirates urine and sputum will be included in the study and how to identify the method of identification first either from the positive blood culture broth or from other uh, smears prepared from the other clinical specimens the typical uh, bipolar stain gram negative bas like appearance will be seen it gives a strong suspicion that possibly this uh, gram negative bas like is possibly a burkholderia uh, pseudomonas pathogen in addition one more uh, point i want to uh, add here is you have to have a background that the per person should be community acquired it's a pseudomonas the meliodosis is a common acquired infection so the patient in admitted in the hospital for long time so unlikely this particular isolation uh, from the clinical sample so there should be a strong suspicion that this particular isolate should be a community uh, community acquired uh, community associated pathogen so how to come uh, the uh, there is nothing specific about the culture isolation the commonly used media for uh, the clinical specimen in the microbiology laboratory like blood agar the combination of blood agar and mcongi agar can be used here for, for the purpose of isolation and how to identify is a typical rough corrugated uh, colonies with the metallic sheen is a typical of uh, colony identification of the pseudomonas isolates but one point we have to keep it in mind that pseudomonas suzeri also it produces the typical rough corrugated colony 
So to identify, and there, there is one more selective media, like uh, Asheron's media, where you get a typical purple color, wrinkled purple color colonies are produced here, but this media is used, uh, recommended only if you're uh, suspecting that there is a clinical specimen which is heavily loaded with the contaminated with the other uh, flora, like uh, your uh, if for blood and for body fluids, this uh, uh, selective media is not re not required. So combination of blood agar and mekong agar is enough for the isolation as it uh, readily grows. And one more point I would like to add here is uh, emphasize that the identification has to be performed by Vitec2 ident uh, identification system by the gram negative ID card. It is mandatory, must, as all the centers under the study, they are the Vitec users. So we strongly recommend that it is we, uh, mandatory. We recommend that the identification has to be done by Vitec2 gram negative ID card. And the mileage of identification is not reliable to the species level. Mileage of might provide the ID as a uh, buckled area species or the identification is not uh, appropriate most of the time. So mileage of ID is not reliable here. And if any centers are doing conventional test, so these tests are there, but we strongly, the tests like oxidase, catalase positive and intrinsically resistant to polymyxin B uh, antimicrobial agent, and oxidative pattern with the OF glucose, OF lactose, OF xylose, maltose, and mannitol, and negative for OF sucrose, and it uh, arginine dehydrolysis is present, and nitrate is reduced to nitrite with the production of nitrogen gas. So these tests are available as a conventional biochemical test, but, uh, but we uh, strongly recommend the centers to use the Y2 gram negative card. In addition to this, there is also antigen detection uh, kits are available uh, from the company that is InBios uh, AM, uh, AMD, that is Active Meliodosis Direct Kit. So here where the polysaccharide capsular polysaccharide antigens are detected and this uh, kit, the rapid kit can be used on whole blood, serum, plasma, urine, pus, sputum sample, as well as the, uh, uh, as, as well as on the bacterial colonies and also the centrifuge uh, positive flag culture broth also can be used. And uh, they also claim that the performance standard is sensitivity as well as specificity is uh, very high. So this uh, kit also, some of the center may be using this kit. It can be used, but uh, the VMR study group, we strongly recommend to use the gram negative ID card. Yeah, apart from the, the InBios card, there is also latex agglutination test card is also available. And the detection is same thing. It depends on the capsular polysaccharide of, and yeah. Excuse me. And uh, the latex agglutination test yeah. also detects the capsular polysaccharide antigen of Bocularis pseudomoli. This also is a simple, rapid, highly specific test. And this test also can be performed on colonies as well as the positive blood culture broth. So this is the method of, uh, method of isolation and identification of Bocularis pseudomoli. It is simple as like any other gram-negative isolate. It readily grows. So there is no special media is required for its isolation. Only the identification, we strongly recommend all the centers to use the Vitec uh, gram negative uh, ID card. In addition, if some centers are doing the combination of conventional test and uh, the rapid tests are okay, but uh, in, however, we strongly recommend to use the, uh, the Vitec ID card. So coming to the methodology of how to perform the antimicrobial susceptibility test using the uh, and uh, the disk diffusion uh, breakpoints. So the as per the CLSI UCAS 2024 guidelines, so the methodology is also same. We'll use the muller hinton agar and 0.5 McFarland is inoculum. And the room air incubation is at the room air 35 plus or minus 1 degree Celsius incubatory temperature. And duration is also 18 hours plus or minus 2 hours. Reading is also taken in the same way with the reflected light. And the QC strain that is recommended is E. coli 80 cc 25922. 
And if some centers are doing, uh, they are doing routinely MIC determination, you can use because the drugs which we are recommending to generate antibiogram, it is not available all uh, by doing the Vitek cards, 406 card. So you need to, and uh, anyway, one more point we want to hi highlight here is, if you are running 405 Vitek card, when you, you cannot take, uh, uh, there is no drop-down box for Buffalderay Pseudomalai in the Vitek. So uh, you, you will not be able to generate the report as a Buffalderay Pseudomalai MIC report. So if you want to do MIC determination, it has to be done by the um, broad micro dilution conventionally, or if uh, the uh, the commercial uh, broth micro dilution kits are, if they are uh, trays are available, or you can use the centers can use e step. But if you use this, uh, these methods, the MIC determination method is going to be quite costly because you have to do individually each drug. So we are not recommending this method. And coming to the breakpoints, as uh, one more thing I want to, these are the drugs which will be there in the testing panel. The amoxiclav, the ceftazidine, imipenem, meropenem, tetracycline, and uh, cotrimoxazole, and chloramphenicol. So the set of these antimicrobial agents will be tested for buccaldery pseudomalai by disc diffusion method. And if you see here, ceftazidine is the routine, ceftazidine is uh, it is 30 microgram, which we routinely test for gram negative isolate, and which we use the breakpoint uh, CLSA breakpoint for the uh, reporting. But uh, but if you see here, as we are following the UCAST uh, method here for the breakpoint interpretation, all other drugs that is the uh, other than ceftazidine, the disc strength are same as we will routinely using for other gram negative organisms. But the septazidam is 10 microgram as recommended by, uh, by the UCAS. That is one more point which the, the centers which will be enrolling under this study, you want to do the testing for the Bocaldere pseudomolai, the center need to procure the drug uh, antibiotic disc that is septazidam of the disc strength of 10 microgram. And if you see the disc breakpoint interpretation, you can see here, there is a very uh, broad range, uh, at least for the four drugs, that is for amoxiclave and for septazidine and cotrimoxazole and chloramphenicol. The susceptibility breakpoint and resistant breakpoint, there is a lot of uh, variation. So you can see that there is one more uh, column that is available in the UCAS table as susceptible increased exposure. That is, most of the, uh, when you do this testing, you can see that more, these four antibiotics, the amoxiclave, septazidine, and the cotrim and chloramphenicol, it might fall in the SIE category. So you you interpret the uh, interpret and enter the data as SIE category. Only that you need to add the report that those uh, these drugs needs to be given in the increased uh, dose for the treatment purpose. So these are the eight drugs which we'll be using in the test and the uh, disc strength. As I told already, septazidine 10 microgram disc will be used. So the distributor, you can contact this uh, distributor, Live Fission. The, uh, he is a Delhi-based distributor. Delhi-based distributor. And he is given a quotation of approximately and uh, the this particular antimicrobial agent. The discs are being... Uh, exported from the, he gets it from the Italy. It's an Italy-based company. So around, uh, they provide around 250 discs, around 5,300 uh, cost. And uh, 50 discs, if the center only 50 discs, then he is uh, ready to provide for 2,000. And uh, in addition, tax will be there. This is a contact number of that person. We'll provide to the center once the presentation is ready, done. So one more very, very important that those centers who want to enroll, uh, be a part of this study, you have to test these drugs. And uh, uh, one more thing, you have to procure the septazidine 10 microgram uh, disc. So as per the U UCAS recommendation, we will be testing the tetracycline disc diffusion only we'll be doing. So if you get a susceptible, uh, susceptible interpretation, 
then it is extrapolated and uh, the doxycycline uh, result is been entered as SIE. If you get tetracycline resistant, then it cannot be, ex uh, then it, if it comes as resistant, then it can be extrapolated as resistant to doxycycline. So when you enter the data for buccalaria pseudomyelite, if it is tetracycline sensitive, you enter it as SIE for doxycycline and tetracycline resistant, enter it as the data as doxycycline resistant. And uh, uh, what the UCAS recommends for port remoxazole, uh, the measurement for the disc, uh, for the zone of inhibition. So there may be, you might observe there may be growth within the zone of inhibition. Then what to do is the density of growth, it may vary from a fine to hazy or to a substantial growth within the zone of inhibition. So if any zone edge, if you, if you can see a clear zone of edge, it can be seen then you ignore within the zone of inhibition if there is some kind of hazy, zone, hazy growth. Ignore that and take the uh, reading from the uh, clear zone, zone where the zone edge is seen as a breakpoint. And coming to the data entry, uh, the data entry has to be done uh, for the pseudomyelite for all these eight drugs which we are recommending has to be done in the IVA platform. You have to uh, go to, as a disk diffusion, you have to take the drop-down box as a secondary test, and you can enter the uh, uh, interpretation data. And it has to be done routinely for all the isolates. Like how you're doing for routinely for all other clinical isolates. So similarly, it has been done. But you have to do one more important point here is, you have to include all the clinical uh, uh, pseudomonal isolates from all the clinical samples. And the organic, organism ID, it has to be, uh, we, pr, uh, refer, we recommend strongly to do the VITEC ID and the data will be transferred from the VITEC for the, if it is a uh, ID has been done from VITEC. If it is manually identified, you have to enter the ID manually. And coming to the AST, so only the, you have to enter only the AST report for the antimicrobial agent, which we have included in the panel. So you have to enter as a disk diffusion uh, entry. So this is the thing. Uh, this table you can see here. If suppose when you're interpreting any of the antimicrobial agent that is in the, as per the UCAST uh, breakpoint, as a SI zone, that is the susceptible increased exposure, you can add a note uh, in your clinical reporting that they uh, need, needs the high, higher dose. And the recommendation is also given in the UCAST table. For oral as well as uh, the parental route, the both it is available on standard dose as well as the increased dose. So the the methodologies, uh, this is the reference methodology is taken from the UCAS guideline. So with this, uh, I've completed my uh, presentation. If you have any doubt, you can ask. It is a standard method of uh, isolation, there is no, uh, it is very similar, like, there is no difficulty in isolation. I, identification, you, we strongly recommend to use the uh, Vitec ID card. Once the ID is sure, then you have to test the, uh, the antimicrobial agent which we have provided in the, uh, in the study protocol. And interpretation to be done by the UCAST uh, 2024 breakpoints guideline. Madam, you were yeah. saying about a SIE, that is susceptible increased exposure, right? Yes, so, yes, ma'am. So that's the terminology used in UCAS. Is it similar yeah, to uh, SDD in CLSI? Yeah, similar yeah. to the SDD. Because the SDD is available only for few uh, anti uh, drug by combination in CLSI. But most of things they give in the table as an intermediate, like I, they give as I. But okay. in UCAS, it is very systematic. They give it as S, SIE, and uh, R. So mostly, oh. like, uh, I is being replaced as a technical uncertainty. And it is SIE they give for most of the drug work combination. And they give the dosage also. What should be the dosage recommended for that uh, breakpoints? So in this uh, table, the high dose, uh, whatever is given under the high dose, that is the dose the recommended if the zone diameter falls under SIE. Otherwise, if it is S, then the standard dose has to be given. This Thank is you. basically you can add in your clinical reporting so that uh, it will be useful for the therapeutic purpose. Yeah, the clinicians. Yeah, for the clinicians. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah.
yeah so uh, uh, sandeep can you go to the breakpoint uh, tape uh, slide yeah so uh, i just summarize what uh, sandeep had presented pseudomalai is uh, a an extremely lethal pathogen in the hospital when uh, you will be seeing a case of maladiosis by the time you isolate and you and you report to the uh, clinical uh, our team you uh, many often we will be finding that the patient is no more so having a proper ast and proper id is of utmost importance to handle the uh, maladiosis cases and uh, white tech is not recommended mbd is the only method by uh, clsi and moru guideline was available but it is a it is a body uh, it is a uh, thailand body which is not universally accepted it is accepted in pockets currently clsi uh, uh, currently the ucas uh, distribution breakpoints are made available in in last two years so we have we have done an extensive discussion with uh, uh the melodiosis group uh, in manipal and uh, dr chiranjay i had a discussion with him and he recommended that even the moru uh, team uh, are now using the yukas guideline uh, because yukas guideline is is been available so he strongly recommended to use yukas uh, uh, breakpoint so that is why uh, we have uh, made our uh, uh, protocol accordingly the only crunch here is uh, septazidim because the uh, disc is of different size than what we use but if you buy one vial of uh, septazidim at 10 microgram which is uh, 50 disc that is uh, that is good enough for the entire study period because you will not expect more than 50 uh, melidiosis isolates and also remember that the septazidim is the first line antibiotic for melidiosis so uh, you muted have a use uh, detrimental effect on the patient outcome so septazidim cotrimoxazole and meropenem these three are and also doxycycline so these four are the most important drugs frequently used for uh, uh, for melidiosis so therefore uh, having this drugs are tested uh, properly is of is of great value the testing we will uh, include tetracycline but in the report we will enter the data of dox doxycycline also because that is the recommended uh, drug for um, treatment of melidiosis cases yeah tetracycline told, result can be extrapolated for doxycycline as i told the result has to be extrapolated any doubt if any of you have then please discuss i'll stop share yes thank you yes ma'am melidiosis is a region in specific uh, pathogen so it may not be available uh, it uh, it may not be prevalent in uh, in uh, some of our centers so that is why they don't have much curiosity to ask questions but in south india it is very common in jipmer uh, yes sir yes sir open. in vaisag also we are isolating at least two to three per girl area per month yeah yes sir so if you any of you have any individual doubt if you want to discuss then you please contact dr sandhya she will be uh, the uh, the coordinator for this study so she she, uh, she will be addressing all your queries so thank you sandhya yeah thank you dr pur thank you uh, ketan ketan can we move on to the uh, most yes. difficult uh, uh, part of uh, of today's uh, program yes <laughs> so uh, we'll be moving to the hemophilus uh, subgroup 
uh, the Bohemopilla study. And uh, now for that, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Pradeep to, uh, to take the uh, stage. And uh, it's a very important pathogen uh, as far as uh, clinical uh, patients are concerned. So over to you, Dr. Pradeep. So, yeah, thank uh, you. One second, uh, Ketan. I just wanted to introduce uh, Pradeep and uh, Dr. Sujata. So, uh, in uh, uh, in Jipmer, we have a very good isolation of uh, of Haemophilus influenza. We usually get around hundred isolates uh, in a year, um, uh, basically from sputum specimen and occasionally from blood or uh, or other specimen. And we all have been trained by uh, Dr. Sujata, who has who is uh, the bacteriology in charge of uh, JIPMA, and he's uh, he is in the in charge of the respiratory uh, section also. And uh, Pradeep was uh, doing senior residency in JIPMA, so he got an opportunity to work with Madam. So Ma'am is uh, uh, Ma'am is available with us uh, in this meeting. Uh, Ma'am, uh, I welcome you to this meeting. Can you uh, say a few words about your experience? Uh, in hemophilus. Uh, Sarvanan? Yes, sir. Yeah, madam is not able to unmute. So, uh, one of you can go to madam's room and uh, and uh, uh, and help her uh, to join the meeting. And uh, in the meanwhile, I'll uh, I'm asking Dr. Pradeep uh, to start the session. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ketan. I'll, without wasting much time, I'll start the session. Uh, is my screen visible? Yes. Okay. So we'll start with the uh, EMR surveillance and uh, antibiotic preparation for hemophilus species. So first is uh, the inclusion criteria, which we'll have is... Uh, Primarily, we'll be uh, focusing on hemophilus influenza isolates, which are obtained on culture from all uh, clinically relevant site-specific specimens. That is uh, blood culture specimen, uh, sterile site blood, uh, ster sterile site body fluid specimens, lower respiratory tract specimen, ocular specimen, and also ear specimens like aspirate from mastoid, ear discharge, ear swab, etc. All these uh, and uh, in addition to this, secondary uh, inclusion criteria is other species of hemophilus and along with HACC group can also be included provided if they are uh, identified correctly to the uh, species level and also they are clinically relevant. So methods to ascertain uh, pathogenicity of uh, hemophilus species and HACC isolates, uh, it is same as before. That is, if there is repeat isolation from same or different specimen uh, representative of infectious process, or if there is clinical correlation with symptoms, or if clinician opines that organism is clinically significant, or in case of direct microscopy, that is direct gram stain, which is suggestive of uh, uh, infective etiology uh, pertinent to this, and also supportive investigations like biomarkers, uh, if it is present, then uh, this pathogenicity of these uh, hemophilus species and also as a group can be ascertained. So going on to processing of uh, clinical specimen for culture, uh, it has to be immediately transported to the laboratory. It should never be refrigerated because they are delicate organisms and uh, it should be plated without delay to avoid uh, any loss of organism viability. The media recommended for these are 5% uh, sheep blood agar and also chocolate agar. So some suggested isolation strategies for these are uh, in case of 5% uh, sheep blood agar, we can add a uh, staph aureus ATCC 25923 spots or streaks. Uh, and in case of chocolate agar, particularly if we are using it for lower respiratory tract specimen, then it is better to add 10 uh, unit of desiccation disc uh, to the chocolate agar media. And incubation is uh, 35 to 37 degrees Celsius in 5% CO2. Minimum of 48 hours uh, incubation is needed and 72 hours is preferred. And in case if CO2 incubator is not available, at least candle jar has to be used, which can provide uh, approximately 2 to 4 percentage of CO2. So this is how uh, blood agar plate uh, it can be inoculated along with uh, Staphylococcus aureus ATCC uh, 25923 spot or streak 
streak is preferred and uh, care should be noted uh, care should be taken that whenever the first streak is done it is preferred to play uh, to uh, uh, do a streak of the staff or uh, atcc uh, as close as possible to the primary well because there are chances that uh, uh, in case uh, of very uh, less uh, load of organism still we can make out the satellitism uh, property by making this first streak as close as possible to the primary well. So coming on to colony morphology, these uh, uh, Haemophilus influenzae, they are small, non-hemolytic, colorless, flat to convex, and uh, it doesn't show any hemolysis, uh, and uh, there is a typical satellitism. So it goes just besides the staphylococcus streak. And if you see a lower respiratory specimen, as told before, better to add bacitracin disc. Uh, you have to uh, see that the concentration of bacitracin disc to be used is 10 units. And second is uh, it should be again placed as close to the primary well as possible. So it is uh, 10 units. I am again repeating, it is not 0 0.04 units which is used. So colonies of uh, uh, Haemophilus influenzae in chocolate agar usually smooth, low convex, grayish, and uh, translucent colonies. If you see uh, the order of these colonies, uh, the smell which comes, it is uh, typically wet cloth smell uh, will be present. Uh, it is also described as uh, mouse nest order or uh, uh, bleaching order. So uh, many times, uh, once you get to uh, uh, get used to identify uh, these colonies, uh, you will also note a typical order uh, that is this wet cloth smell, which will come out even when you open the plate. So then growth uh, uh, on uh, sheep blood agar and also satellitism has to be performed. So again, uh, sub, uh, a sub this is done especially to identify the colony. Uh, so here, uh, whatever colony which has to be identified, uh, it has to be plated onto blood agar. The blood agar is divided into two halves. So in one half, a simple streaking is done, whereas in the other half, uh, uh, simple streaking with uh, perpendicular streaking of Staphylococcus aureus ATCC. And uh, these plates has to be incubated uh, for 20 to 24 hours, again 35 to 37 days Celsius in 5% CO2. So next is uh, uh, growth requirements, uh, that is uh, additional growth requirement, X and V factor. So in order to uh, identify, uh, uh, detect the growth requirements, uh, uh, usually a lawn culture uh, of the organism to be identified uh, is uh, performed with 0.5 McFarland standard. And uh, the media which can be used are nutrient agar, triplicase soy agar, uh, BHA agar, and also molar intern agar. So here, uh, filter paper discs or uh, strips impregnated with these factors are placed on the agar. Again, incubation for 20 to 24 hours and uh, 35 to 37 degrees Celsius in 5% CO2. So coming on to the identification of uh, Haemophilus influenzae. So here, uh, if we see automated is preferred for identification, that is either by Malditoff or there is specialized uh, VITEC card for identification that is VITEC 2 NH ID card and also other automated ID systems if it is available. So we are preferring automated uh, identification of Haemophilus influenzae, whereas conventional is also applicable provided all these points are present. So that is in case of conventional, there should be growth on chocolate agar, but there should not be any growth on uh, sheep blood agar. And the growth on sheep blood agar will be present only in the presence of stack streak. And if you see the colony grams morphology, it should have pleomorphic GNCB. Uh, it should be catalase positive and oxidase positive. In addition to all these tests, satellitism has to be performed uh, compulsorily. Uh, apart from the primary plate, which shows satellitism, still satellitism uh, has to be performed in the way which has been described before, that is dividing the plate into two. And uh, again, factor uh, uh, factor uh, X V requirement. It is it is compulsory to perform this test, and you can see that uh, for H influenzae uh, around factor V and factor X disc, there won't be any growth, whereas uh, there will be growth around factor X V disc. 
so this this uh, identification scheme is for particularly hemophilus influenza where automated is preferred and conventional identification is acceptable whereas in case of other species of hemophilus uh, and also has a group that is uh, the species which are mentioned here parainfluenza hemolyticus parahemolyticus agregatibacter aphrophilus actinomycetum comitans cygnus and cardiobacterium echinella kingella kingae all these the preferred uh, identity that is uh, it is mandatory that identification should be compulsorily done with automated systems okay that is maldit of vitec2 nsid card which can give identification of all the species which has been mentioned in the previous slide so conventional can be used as a supplemental uh, test satellitism can also be used as a supplemental test but again here factor xv and xv disk testing is compulsory so for hemophilus influenzae it is automated is preferred but conventional is acceptable whereas in case of all other hemophilus species and has a group automated is compulsory along with factor xv and xv disk test so the reason why we have uh, gone into uh, or, uh, we have uh, made compulsory of uh, identification of hemophilus species uh, and has a group apart from hemophilus influenzae is it is very difficult to differentiate uh, all these species conventionally though there are few but still it has to be used only for supplemental testing not for confirmed identification always identification to be confirmed with automated tests so automated the commonly available is vitec2 uh, nsid card uh, that is uh, it can identify uh, hemo uh, all the hemophilus species and has a group mentioned before and uh, in, in order to uh, use this uh, id card uh, the growth should be taken from either chocolate agar or chocolate agar with bacitracin and uh, preferably uh, incubated uh, for 18 to 24 hours at 37 degrees celsius and 5 to 10% co2 so coming on to the critical part uh, that is uh, performance of susceptibility testing so as per clsa m100 guidelines it is clearly mentioned that this diffusion has to be performed only on hemophilus test medium not on chocolate agar so this hemophilus test medium uh, these are uh, commercial uh, ready made commercial uh, ready made plates are available or in house it can be prepared so ast testing it is it has to be compulsorily performed on hemophilus test medium not on chocolate agar so breakpoints if you see uh, clsa m100 uh, 34th edition it gives uh, clinical breakpoints only for hemophilus influenzae and para influenzae so uh, the antibiotics which we'll be including are these 10 uh, which is mentioned here so uh, as per clsa guidelines uh, it is also mentioned that uh, ideally uh, only four disc has to be used per uh, htm plate but uh, since we have 10 antibiotics which has to be tested we are keeping as five uh, discs per plate so that per isolate we need two htm plates and the incubator condition here is again 5% co2 uh, for 16 to 18 hours overnight growth so if you see uh, uh, clinical breakpoints are available only for h influenza and para influenza whereas uh, uh, for other hemophilus species and as a group uh, in clsa m45 third edition you can see only mic is available but in our study we will be taking uh, uh, we will be extrapolating the same it is deficient breakpoints which is given for influenza and para influenza for even other species of uh, hemophilus and has a group except for chloramphenicol the rationality behind, behind why we are uh, trying to extrapolate is that in both these uh, guidelines if we see the test medium htm broth uh, uh, test medium can be used for mic detection so if you see the breakpoints for both these uh, group of uh, uh, organism that is influenza para influenza and also other species in hazard the breakpoints are similar except for chloramphenicol which is different so we we uh, had decided that extrapolation is not possible uh, for chloramphenicol and that is the reason 
for other species of Haemophilus, that is apart from influenzae and parainfluenzae, and also has a group, uh, nine antibiotic discs has to be performed, that is except chloramphenicol, and these results can be extrapolated for those. So coming on to uh, uh, hemophilus test medium preparation, either commercial, commercially available plate, ready-made plates can be uh, procured or you can go for in-house testing preparation. So this also is clearly given in CLSA uh, M100 document. So as to how to prepare this in-house uh, HTM. So uh, one liter of Mullerint Nagar, uh, uh, for one liter of Mullerint Nagar to be prepared, we have to add 30 uh, ml of hematin stock solution. So this stock solution uh, is prepared by uh, mixing uh, 0.5 milligram per ml that is of hematin powder in 0 0.01 mole per uh, liter of NaOH, which is approximately 0.4 gram per liter of NaOH. To this, 5 gram of uh, yeast extract is added and this entire mixture is autoclaved. After this, we have to add uh, NA, NAD stock solution that is uh, 5 milligram per liter NAD in distilled water. But this uh, NAD, it is heat, heat uh, labile. So that is the reason it has to be filter sterilized and then added post autoclaving. So uh, this is how a commercial HTM will look. And uh, we are requesting uh, to add 5 antibiotic discs per HTM. So coming on to the QC of AST, uh, which is the most challenging part. So here uh, we have uh, reduced some standards. That is, uh, CLSA clearly recommends that uh, the growth check for hemophilus test medium has to be performed with a ATCC double one, uh, six double two. Uh, so uh, that, that uh, ATCC has to be uh, used. Whereas uh, uh, for uh, uh, testing of antibiotics along with media, ATCC 49247 is used. So this, uh, what we have reduced is a single ATCC can be used both for growth check as well as for testing the antibiotics. But again, the frequency of uh, AST testing, here it is uh, at least each batch of STM which is prepared or used has to be tested and each lot of antibiotics tested has to be, uh, each lot of antibiotics tested also has to be put for this QC. So these are the QC range which is uh, present and also if you see the ATC strain maintenance, so it is uh, preferred maintenance for uh, minus 60 to minus 80 is skim milk. Uh, you can also go for BSA glycerol broth with plus or minus 5% sheep blood and also additional supplementation or even chocolate agast land um, can be used for uh, the weekly QC. So this has short uh, term. Usually it is uh, it can be used from 3 to 4 weeks, not beyond that. You can maintain it up to that time. So one more optional testing for beta lactamase is uh, nitro seven test. So uh, there is a category called uh, BLNAR that is beta lactamase negative ampicillin resistant strains of H. influenzae. So for these, for for identifying these strains, uh, if nitro seven test can be performed, you can identify beta lactamase whether it is positive or negative. And if it is negative and ampicillin being resistant, then it can be identified as BLNAR strains. So the clinical implication is, again, if they are BLNAR strains, though there is in vitro susceptibility seen for these combinations, that is uh, moxiclav, ampicillabactam, piptas, or even cefiroxin, though it appears in vitro susceptible, it has to be considered as resistant. So if nitrosephin test can be performed, uh, it is better so that uh, reporting of these antibiotics will be easier. Then finally, coming on to data entry part. So again, here data entry of AST for hemophilus will be done in IBAR platform and uh, as done with other uh, routine isolates. So organism ID, so it can be either done by manual entry or data transferred from Vitec. And AST for all the uh, 
uh, antimicrobial agents which are included uh, with zone diameters to be added. So few of the price list which I have mentioned here, uh, that is in case if you are, if uh, it is feasible to go for commercial HTM, then uh, the cost per plate will be approximately 100 and the minimum pack size which comes is uh, 10 uh, plates per pack. So this is for commercial HTM, whereas in case of in-house HTM, uh, we can uh, follow the protocol which is uh, mentioned in CLSI by adding individual ingredients to Muller Intern Agar or you can go ahead with this hemophilus test agar base along with hematin growth supplement. So if you see this hematin growth supplement, it will contain both hematin as well as NAD and the hemophilus test agar base will contain yeast extract. So if you have only these two uh, ingredients, that is hemophilus test agar base and hematin growth supplement, you can prepare in-house HTM. That is test agar base to be uh, sterilized by autoclaving. And this hematin growth supplement has to be reconstituted with uh, 5 ml sterile distilled water. And uh, post autoclave, you can add this, thereby obviating uh, the need for uh, filter sterilizer if you are going ahead with this protocol. And if you see the approximate cost per in house HTM media, if you are preparing in house, it will have approximately 20 rupees per plate. How many plates can be uh, uh, prepared, Pradeep? Sir, uh, plates, if you see uh, the minimum uh, pack size, which comes is 500 gram. So in that case, with that, approximately 200 uh, plates can be prepared. Okay. 200 plates can be prepared. Uh, for, from this and uh, so the commercial plate what you have uh, mentioned no uh, what is the storage life for that sir i have to actually check but usually these media they are uh, kept for uh, uh, three to four weeks but i have to check on that so as to how much time it can be kept sir. yeah okay so next is uh, uh, if you see the factor x b and x v disc so uh, the minimum pack size is uh, 50 disc per vial uh, is uh, uh, the minimum pack size and cost is uh, 350. So approximately per isolate, it will cost 20 rupees. All these are high media, right? Yes, sir. All these are high media price list. Okay. And uh, if you want to go ahead for procurement of uh, H influenza ATCC strain, then uh, per two stick, it costs uh, 8,515. And uh, if you have minus 60 skim milk and if you can maintain it, then this usually goes uh, depending upon the quality of uh, QC strain maintenance. So QC, we can go in stage two. Uh, yes. are, uh, QC, uh, one of the center can procure and uh, can maintain and can give to other centers. So that can happen uh, uh, in, in, in stage two. Stage one is the the center should be ready to uh, have HTM and start doing distribution. Yes, yes. So that right. is the uh, minimum thing what all the centers should start doing. QC, we will uh, work it out how to, I uh, mean, we can discuss with uh, uh, some of the centers who are already having QC strain. Uh, yes, if right. some of the centers are already having hemophilus or QC strain, then, then please uh, share the information to Dr. Pradeep. Uh, I think San John uh, is using this. What I have heard, uh, we'll find out if uh, if uh, if uh, if that is the case. Yes, sir. Yes, and uh, finally, nitrocephalin disc. Uh, so if if uh, it it is optional, and if you can procure, the, it is costly because per uh, disc it comes approximately two fifty. Uh, so if it is possible, this also can be procured. So the last slide is uh, all the challenges which is usually restricting us from proceeding with uh, uh, hemophilus testing is first is isolation for which we have uh, clearly delineated few strategies and second is identification where again uh, we are going ahead with conventional for hemophilus influenzae and for other species with uh, automated testing 
and for uh, AST, uh, we have discussed how we can perform, uh, how we can prepare in-house uh, uh, hemophilus test media and also maybe go for uh, ready-made if it is possible. And also the uh, QC strain maintenance that is with uh, procurement, frequency and maintenance, especially with low throughput labs, it is uh, quite difficult. Uh, so these are the challenges uh, which uh, we have tried to address uh, in order to test uh, hemophilus. So thank you. And uh, and and hemophilus is not like uh, Burkhardia pseudomyelitis, like, which is uh, which is region specific. It is available in some states, but not in other. Hemophilus must be there in most of our centers. It's that we have to improve our isolation technique. So for uh, uh, very few microbiologists in, in India have worked in hemophilus. They, they have uh, uh, an expertise in this field. And uh, we are blessed to have Dr. Sujata here, who is the bacteriologist uh, in, uh, in JIPMA. She, she is uh, looking after the respiratory sections. She has been all of our teachers. And uh, the, as I told, Dr. Pradeep has uh, worked in uh, Dr. Sujata's lab. Uh, during his uh, senior residency time and uh, during the pre uh, presentation uh, preparation also uh, pradeep has taken uh, madam's help to yes. uh, to take his uh, uh, to take uh, 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 ma'am's input so i request ma'am to uh, say a few words and her experience uh, in the field and whether uh, is it a distant reality for us or we we will be able to collate the data Hello, everyone. I'm sorry about the goof up earlier. I was trying to unmute myself, but I uh, wasn't able to do it. Uh, like Apoor said, uh, I've been working in the exudate and respiratory sections for the last 20, 25 years now. And uh, we have been successful in isolating hemophilus influenzae from all samples. And I think I owe that to my teacher, Dr. Reba Kanungo. I've learned the techniques from and um, as far as I'm concerned, actually, we don't use chocolate agar frequently in our uh, respiratory samples. We depend more on sheep blood agar with Staphylococcus aureus streak to identify, isolate and identify hemophilus influenzae. But like uh, Pradeep said, just satellitism alone is not sufficient. I've seen many people who look at satellitism and think that is hemophilus influenzae. It's not always so. Maybe 95% of the time, whenever you see satellitism, it may be hemophilus influenzae. But please remember, there are other organisms also which show satellitism. And therefore, uh, supplemental tests for identification, including gram stain, catalase, oxidase, XNV factor requirement, etc., will be necessary. Like a bio, uh, Particularly in respiratory samples, we keep getting abiotrophia. Abiotrophia is a strep originally called streptococcus nutritionally variant streptococci they also show satellitism but when you do a gram stain you'll be easily able to differentiate them from hemophilus plus they'll be catalase negative and they are of no significance in respiratory samples of course so you can ignore them uh, actually we don't have any uh, experience with HTM so far I'm sorry to say that we have been using chocolate agar for sensitivity all these years planning to start using HTM. I think uh, most labs will definitely be able to isolate and identify this organism. If you all have automated systems, it becomes much easier, of course. Um, Ma'am, uh, ma X and B factors uh, are, are mandate or uh, they can go with Vitec ID also? If Vitec ID is available, then there's no problem. But if you do not have automated systems, to have X and V factor because many of the para influenzae, para hemolyticus, they will also show satellitism because they require V factor. So, unless you have either automated system or X and V factor uh, discs, yeah. you will not be able to differentiate uh, influenzae from para influenzae. Our so centers are manual. all having automated system, ma'am. They are the Vitec users. But the only okay. challenge is uh, a hemophilus card they may not have because. Uh, that that they don't get much. So yeah, the minimum true. pack size is uh, 20 cards, uh, what they have to buy from Biomedio. 
and uh, if they are if uh, they don't want to do so then they can uh, buy one vial of x and v factor that is that will be much cheaper than uh, buying 20 cards of uh, 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 definitely. Uh, definitely okay the other thing i wanted to tell you all was how do you interpret isolation of influenza from samples like the lower respiratory tract samples where it is also a colonizer, isn't it? It's a colonizer in the upper respiratory tract. So frequently you would isolate hemophilus influenzae without it being clinically significant. So when, um, extreme care and caution has to be exercised while you're reporting hemophilus influenzae from lower respiratory tract samples. So here, uh, gram stain of these lower respiratory samples is of great use and I would like to emphasize I don't know how many of you are using dilute carbol fusion as a counter stain in gram stain and how many of you are using saffron in a neutral red for hemophilus influenzae dilute carbol fusion is the best counter stain and if the labs are using other counter stains I would recommend using this at least for the lower respiratory tract samples Otherwise, it's very difficult to pick up the extreme gram-negative cocobacilli in a sputum sample with other counter stains. I don't know about the experience of others in this, but this is the recommended counter stain for hemophilus influenza. Anything else, so, Apoor? So, ma'am, uh, you can enlighten on uh, how to differentiate between a commensal hemophilus and a uh, pathogen hemophilus. Uh, in direct, uh, I mean, uh, in, yeah. the, uh, in the lower respiratory tract specimen. One thing is, do not report hemophilus influenzae from poor quality lower respiratory tract samples. So your quality of the specimen should be good. That is Bartlett score more than zero. Okay. But uh, there is one uh, catch here. If you have less than 10 pus cells and less than 10 epithelial cells per low par field, your Bartlett score is going to be zero. Okay. Remember that in neutropenic patients, pus cells will not be there. So even in such samples, if you get pure heavy growth of hemophilus influenzae, you go ahead and report it. Otherwise, in all other normal individuals, report hemophilus influenzae only one, only from good quality samples with a Bartlett score above zero. The other thing is, many times when the hemophilus is significant, you would see them as numerous clusters of gram bacilli in the direct smear, either within pus cells or in close association with pus cells. And there'll be hardly any normal flora. So in such situations, you can be almost 100% sure that hemophilus influenza is a pathogen in such a case. Whereas if it is a commensal, you may or may not see them in the direct smear. Many epithelial cells will be there. The organisms will be in contact with epithelial cells and you will see not, uh, not also. So in such cases, it is better if you ignore hemophilus influenzae and don't get too excited and report all hemophilus influenzae from respiratory samples. You need to report them only from good quality samples where you also see them predominant morphotype and in large numbers. Then you can be almost 100% sure that it's a pathogen. Yes, ma'am. Very, very useful points. Uh, Pradeep, uh, you can note down these points and uh, add on to the slides yes, so sir. that yes, uh, uh, it will be useful to the participants. Ma'am, uh, is it a distant reality or uh, is it uh, okay to dream now that we can have a Indian uh, go, ahead. Of, uh, <laughs> go ahead and dream <laughs> I think it's perfectly possible to isolate identify and perform sensitivity and have a good data from India that too with so labs taking part in your study I'm sure we'll have good data available yeah our centers are all quality issued centers they are uh, Vitec users plus uh, they do QC regularly so they have a bit of good standard in the laboratories so it's uh, only thing is they have they would not have uh, i mean uh, uh, other uh, uh, they might not be looking into hemophilus like uh, inclusion of staphylococcus trichline and uh, bacitracin disc and uh, 
then having some confirmation also by uh, uh, Vitek ID. That's what yeah. is uh, uh, required. Uh, anyway, Dr. Pradeep will be there uh, as a uh, as a coordinator for this uh, particular uh, sub study organism. So if you have any doubt, you can share. We have we have made some WhatsApp groups also, ma'am. So they, uh, whenever they have doubt, they can post the pictures in the group and uh, you can have a discussion. Uh, so okay. that uh, we all can help each other to improve the education. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, thank you thank so you much, ma'am. Ma you have been working so much uh, uh, in Sudo Malay also. So do you have any uh, particular uh, one or two important tips which will help the uh, participants? Uh, I think like Dr. Sandhya said, identifying and isolating Barcoldaria Sudo Malay is not at all difficult. The only sample that I would think of is respiratory samples. Because in most other samples, it will occur as a monomicrobial infection. You will not have any difficulty. In sputum, to isolate and identify a few non-lactose fermenting colonies from uh, the mixture of the normal flora may be difficult. And you may many times you may dismiss it as Udamona species. But uh, on prolonged incubation, that metallic sheen, that slight pink color because of oxidation of lactose, these are all clues. Plus, uh, if it's uh, extra pulmonary site, multiple abscesses, septicemia yeah. in diabetic patients, 90% of the patients will be diabetic. Okay. And multiple and, abscesses. Uh, yeah, yeah. This ICT, which she was mentioning, is an extremely good test, but unfortunately, it's no longer available in India. We had used it uh, some years ago. Uh, it's a really good uh, confirmatory test, and within a few minutes, you'll be able to identify Burkholderia from colonies. But unfortunately, they stopped uh, providing it in India. We don't ha have it anymore. Yes, ma'am. Uh, and uh, uh, participating centers, I request to ask some of your queries if you have. You will not get this opportunity to interact with ma'am. Namaste, ma'am. Namaste. I'm, do I'm Dr. Gayatri from Vishakhapatnam. My hometown. Yes, ma'am. Uh, <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma I met you when I was, uh, I was there for the workshop. Um, and uh, I'm very proud that you are also from, you also hail from Vishakhapatnam. I are very proud of you, ma'am. And you. we remember you every time I visit my microbiology department, your mother's picture in the HODS category. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Very proud of you, ma'am. And recently I have come across one case, ma'am. Okay. It's a variola uh, case, ma'am. It's a 9 to 10 days history of uh, lesions and with uh, meningitis or encephalitis, ma'am. So they have sent the CSF sample in which there are no pustules, no microorganisms is my report now. But the biofire has given both the varicella zoster and uh, Haemophilus influenza bacteria. Oh. So and I tried satellitism also ma'am after receiving the report, but I haven't seen any colonies in the uh, chocolate agar ma'am. Okay, the thing we should remember is real-time PCR is extremely sensitive much more sensitive than culture. So if there were very, very few organisms in the CSF, definitely you would not have been able to see them on stain and you may not have been able to isolate them in culture either. But they could have been picked up by the biofire, which, which is a real-time PCR. That's the only explanation. Because I don't think false positives are a problem with biofire. Okay, okay. So we have to consider it as a true pathogen from biofire. Bio Probably it's a secondary infection in already existing okay. varicella meningitis. Okay. Thank you. Any other center have any doubt? No, sir. Can you hear me? Uh, good afternoon. Yes, please go ahead. Yeah, ma'am, ma uh, good afternoon. I'm uh, Dr. Supriya. I'm from St. John's Medical College. 
I just wanted one uh, clarification. A lower respiratory tract, what all uh, actually it includes, ma'am? Because many a times from throat swab also we get uh, hemophilus uh, influenza. So will that be considered in the study or uh, we should no. not include it? Because uh, it's I, also yeah. known to be one of the pathogens which known to cause uh, bacterial uh, tonsillitis. I need a clarification on that. Yeah. And in Actually, sinusitis uh, and all. Epiglottitis, it is one of the known uh, causative agent. It can so cause in, epiglottitis, in which case you may be able to isolate it also from the throat because there's yeah. a concomitant tonsillitis. But yeah. epiglottitis is an extremely rare condition and mm -hmm. nobody would send a throat swab in epiglottitis because that would induce a spasm and respiratory distress. So where okay. blood cultures, yeah, blood cultures are the preferred sample for epiglottitis. Mm -hmm. Somebody is sending you a throat swab with an isolated pharyngitis or tonsillitis and you isolate uh, hemophilus influenzae, I don't think you should consider it as a pathogen here. So I think okay. it is better to avoid hemophilus influenzae isolates from throat swab because 99.9% .9 of the time they'll be just colonizers here. Oh, usually what we do is we report, but we report it with the comment telling that it could be a colonizer and kindly correlate uh, clinically. So will that suffice or we should not report? I think we better avoid reporting it from throat swabs. Okay, ma'am. Because and they one... may or may not uh, give much credence to the comment and uh, once they see a pathogen being reported, they'll go ahead. Most of the time, it will be viral infection and uh, there would not be any need for antibiotics. Yeah. So I think yeah. it's better if you avoid that. Okay. My second uh, question is, we did a small undergraduate project where mm. for regarding this hemophilus, we did get a lot of hemophilus para-influenza. And the literature when we went, it says that para-influenza and pathogenicity is a query that it is said to be not as pathogenic as uh, hemophilus influenza. So SNF. should yeah so para influenza from a lower respiratory tract infection should we still take it into consideration should we report or report with the comment how do we go about it ma'am? Um, actually yesterday we were discussing this uh, with Dr. Pradeep. He yeah. was telling this is a practical that experience that we got through ma'am when we did a small study in Avana because we frequently get hemophilus and there are a lot of. Uh, interpretation queries that we go through. Yeah. So just wanted your valuable inputs on this. So if it is an exacerbation of chronic bronchitis, it may be mm. considered as a possible pathogen, but not. Mm. So unless that is written in your clinical diagnosis, do not report para influenza from lower respiratory tract samples. So it has to be clinically correlated and then thank you so much, ma'am. Yeah, one small thing which can be added, ma'am, is they can discuss with the clinicians and and then report. So that will add the value to the yeah. report. And uh, Saint John is one of the other center in our group who is uh, who has who has yeah, who yeah. has mentioned that they are they have very high isolation of uh, of hemophilus influenza. Uh, Doctor Supriya, you have more than hundred per year. That's what uh, is mentioned in the Google form. I miss mute. Yeah. Madam, you have to unmute yourself. Oh, sorry, ma'am. Yes, sir. We get a lot of isolation and we have done small student project also. We look forward and we have Malditoff. We do identification plus satelliteism. Yeah. Because we have automated method, we are not using X and B. But uh, our yeah, right. practical experience, we do get hemophilus para-influenza more in number, hemophilus influenza, and sometimes hemophilus hemolyticus. Uh, not frequently from blood culture because say they say they say that bacterial bottle has got some kind of inhibition for the growth of hemophilus species. So not frequently from the blood sample, but definitely from the respiratory eye and the ear swab sample. Yeah, the same experience even I also have, ma'am. Uh, in blood culture, our hemophilus isolation is hardly in a year, one or two hemophilus oh. influence. And especially pediatric patients, sir, that we, if we, even if we get, it will be from pediatric patients.
ஒன்லி <laughs> after doing your qc check and your antibiotic uh, testing and then you have to store it properly because this is a enriched media there is a high chance of uh, contamination so after you prepare batch wise you have to seal four five plates properly and keep it for a long term storage our duration of storage is one month we can store it for one month provided you do your qc more frequently and uh, there is ensure that there is no contamination uh it will work sir and uh, uh, before you put, you put how will you put qc uh, sir once in a week we test for the after preparation once in a week we do the qc preparation of the plate yes sir yes sir and um, plates um, you store for uh, around 4 weeks yes sir not more than that but before that we it gets consumed sir we prepare in less quantity and it gets uh, 20 plates And, yeah 100 ml like that 100 ml how, mm. how do you store your hemophilus influenza isolates the qc strain ma'am we have uh, cryo vials and that is mm. for long term uh, storage other than that uh, we have this uh, chocolate agar uh, slant or uh, chocolate glycerol broth that is what we are uh, storing so you in are that able way, to recover these uh, isolates yes, for a long time. yes ma'am yeah yes but however uh, it the duration of this thing is not as long as the other gram negatives maybe yeah. if we use the gram negatives for longer this will be once in 3 years we have to procure the standard strains and we need to revise that's that. really good if you are able to maintain it for 3 years <laughs> yes ma'am <clears throat> but we use the cryo vials ma'am we only cut and keep it in minus 80 right. and for routine use we use uh, chocolate agar slats so uh, uh dr chopriya uh, we will be contacting you uh, frequently because you yes. have some experience also to use stm and yes. uh, you maintain the qc strain so you can uh, uh, will you uh, 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 is it okay for you to help uh, dr pradeep uh, in uh, in the planning for qc yes sir yes definitely sir definitely yeah okay okay so dr pradeep you can yeah. uh, be in touch with uh, dr supri actually i was trying to call uh, dr savita ma'am uh, from morning but uh, okay. somehow i could not contact her i was okay, uh, plan- uh, i was just uh, curious to ask her how she is maintaining qc and uh, whether uh, uh, is it okay to distribute to the centers okay. so uh, pradeep you can speak to dr supri later and uh, yeah. uh, and let us have a plan of uh, how to go about for qc okay, okay? definitely sure. thank you sir. thank you so much okay any other centers if you have any queries on any of these pathogens uh, you can ask or we can close the meeting so ketan uh, we can close the meeting yeah uh, just last point sir uh, any center who has uh, to begin with uh, miss the attendance if they would like to mention their vmr code uh, then will shortly very briefly uh, mark their code sir, as an attendance vmr 54 sir okay sir ramanam to take care of that 54 uh, 102 102 
yes, yes sir yes. i jo jo joined late sorry for that okay. but i am present ha okay ha 54 and 102 any other center yes i just make a note of it. Mm -hmm. Thirty-four. We have marked already. Thank you. Okay, I, I think that's it. Uh, well, two hours of no. Fifty-four. I'm there. Fifty-four. Fifty-four. We have marked sir. Fifty-four and one not two. Yes, yes, sir. yes. We marked. Okay, that's it from our side, sir. Uh, Forty-five is another uh, center. Forty-five is marked. Okay, sir. I'll just check. So, uh, uh, thank you, Pradeep. Uh, thank you, Sandhya. Thank you, Anand, uh, for uh, making this session uh, possible. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sujata, uh, to be there in the session and help the uh, audience to understand hemophilus isolation. So, uh, with this, I, I will conclude the meeting. Uh, uh, this meeting is one of the very, very important meeting what we had in uh, VMR, where we have learnt on how to uh, do the AST of uh, the uh, the tricky pathogens, which uh, either we get very rarely like Viprio, or we are not able to isolate like Haemophilus. Or we have region-specific isolation like uh, uh, like Burkhildaria pseudomoli. So if you have any doubt, then you can ask the respective uh, RCs, uh, Sandhya Anand and uh, Dr. Pradeep. And uh, let us make our uh, VMR phase two study as a landmark to have the antibiogram, antibiogram of all these important pathogens. Thank you very much to attend the session.